Hi, I'm Mandy and welcome to my channel. Today I have a video that is probably the most ambitious project I have attempted thus far. This Christmas season I decided to make an advent calendar full of Nintendo DS games. The DS is my favourite handheld and an extremely nostalgic system for me. I got my DS Lite as a Christmas present when I was 11, and it ended up being one of the most memorable Christmases ever. So doing a Nintendo DS Christmas special just feels right. Now the idea is, I'm going to be filling this advent calendar I made a few years ago with 24 games from my collection. Every day I'll sit down and play about 30 minutes to an hour of whatever game I happen to open up that day. This is partly an excuse to chat about some of my favourite games on the system, but also a way to try to get myself to relax, because nothing soothes my soul like a good DS session. Um, okay, so let's do this. So for the very first day we have... Contact! This is a fantastic one to start with. This is one of my more recent DS games. I got it on my first trip to America in 2019, and I remember being so excited that I played it immediately when I got home. I remember that week my dad got this brand new coffee machine, and my brain loves to make associations, so just about every time I make coffee now I think of Contact. So Contact is an RPG with real-time combat, which seems to take quite a bit of inspiration from Earthbound in terms of themes and humour and whatnot. It's about a scientist who crash lands his spaceship on a strange planet, and basically uses this young boy he meets to help him find the parts he needs to get the ship working again. It has a really cool experience system, and a lot of jobs. I talked a bit more in depth about it in an older video, so I'll link that in the description if you want to hear more about it, because it's a pretty cool game. I had fun revisiting it. For day number two, we have... Time Hollow, another fantastic title. This one is an adventure game that I really enjoyed. It's full of time travel shenanigans, mystery, and some really interesting characters. I really like the tone of the game. It leans sort of on the serious side, but isn't overly dark or anything. It's about six or seven hours, and I remember that the pacing felt really good and thought that the story was well written. I've also talked about this one in the past, so I'll throw that link down there as well. The third game for the month is... Shiran the Wanderer! This is actually going to be my first time playing this game, and I'm super excited because I love Mystery Dungeon games. This has been on my backlog for a while. Okay, so update. This game is everything I was hoping it would be. As a big Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fan, I was expecting to love it, and I absolutely do. It was made by the same creators, so it feels so familiar. There are lots of similarities in the controls, and I think in some sound effects too, which is awesome. I think the key difference between them is that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is heavier on the narrative and lighter on the gameplay, in the sense that Shirin is much more roguelike. If you die in Shirin, you're back to level 1 and the first area of the game, whereas Pokemon will let you do one dungeon at a time and save in between. In Shirin, there are checkpoints along the way where you can store items to help with future runs, but you're still going to have to go through the whole thing in one go and risk losing everything you're carrying every time. But it's a lot of fun. I think I'm going to be playing a lot more of this this month. Okay, so today's game is... Professor Layton and the Curious Village. A classic, of course, and I think the perfect game for this advent calendar. This is a pretty popular series on the DS, but if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a series of puzzle adventure games. One of the most, if not the most, wholesome games I've ever played. It's full of every type of puzzle you can imagine, and has such lovable characters and well-written mystery storylines. I actually played a lot of the Layton games on my train commutes to and from uni, so playing this really takes me back. Definitely one of my favourites for the system. Critical thinking is the key to success. Day number five is... Pokemon Soul Silver. Ah, I have so much nostalgia for this game. So I actually played its counterpart, Heart Gold, back in the day, 
which is funny because Lugia is actually my favorite Pokemon. The reason I went for Heart Gold instead was because my sister had Soul Silver, so it seemed like a smart decision, and that way we could trade exclusives and stuff. This copy of Soul Silver was a very special present from my husband. I really wanted to have it in my collection one day because this was the version that my heart truly wanted, and it is one of my favorite DS games. So a big thank you to him because I know that they've really skyrocketed in price and it's not the easiest game to get nowadays. So this is my favorite mainline Pokemon game. I haven't played them all, but I don't really think anything could change that. A lot of it is tied up in nostalgia, of course. I remember playing it in grade 8, and I used to bring the Pokewalker to school with me all the time and pretend my Pokemon were walking alongside me. The game itself was so fun. I love the Johto region, I love the legendary dogs, I love that your Pokemon walk around with you and that you can customize their Pokeballs. Needless to say, I had a lot of fun playing Soul Silver today. I've been wanting to start up a new file on this cart for a while now, so I'm glad that I finally had a chance to do it. Today's game is... Luminous Arc 2. This is another very special game for me. It's one of the first games that made me fall in love with the Nintendo DS. It's a tactical RPG set in the Kingdom of Carnava. As of late, the Kingdom has been dealing with attacks by these monsters called Beast Fiends, and teams up with the Magical Association of Witches to try to put an end to it. At the same time, there's tension within the Association as one of their most powerful witches has turned against them. I really loved the story in this game. I remember there were some twists and turns that I thought was so exciting when I was younger. And the combat is really fun. This was actually my introduction to tactical RPGs, so it has a very special place in my heart. For day number 7 we have... Children of Mana. This is another one I haven't gotten to yet, so I'm very excited for today's play session. I used to see Children of Mana all the time at game stores, and I was always on the fence about buying it, because, you know, when you're a kid you unfortunately can't buy every game you want to get. But yeah, now that I'm older I'm trying to track down all those games that I missed, and luckily I was able to find this one really cheap a few years ago. Now, I immediately had a really good feeling about this game when I booted it up. I don't know too much about it, and reviews are kind of all over the place, but so far it seems promising. It's an action RPG where you get to choose between four different characters to play as. It's got really lovely and vibrant visuals, and seems interesting enough so far. I think I'm going to be really eager to pick this one back up again. For day number eight, we have... Bunnies! <laughs> this probably seems like a pretty random one, but I have such a fondness for this weird little game. I got it as an Easter present when I was a kid, and I was so surprised by how charming it was. As you've probably surmised, it's a pet game where you look after bunnies, but the twist is that your bunny speaks to you. You teach them to talk by doing these little spelling mini-games, and over time they'll start to have little conversations with you and ask you questions about English and stuff. It sounds so silly, but I love it, and I love my rabbit. My name's Bella. I think that the interactions you can have with the bunnies are just so heartwarming, and it's a really sweet game, especially for kids. Day number nine is... Oh, Ghost Trick! Another favorite of mine. This is a puzzle adventure game where you control a ghost, and you use his powers to influence the living world by possessing items and doing ghostly things. It has a fantastic story. It was actually written by Shu Takumi, who also wrote the early Ace Attorney games, which speaks volumes, I think. It's been a long time since I've played this game, so it was really nice revisiting it. Okay, day number 10. Oh, Ring of Fates. Man, this game brings back so many memories. I was so enraptured by this game when I was a kid, and I can't really pinpoint why that was, but it's a game that I really cherish. It's an action RPG about some twins that embark on a quest to defeat an ancient evil that has been threatening the peace in their village. 
There's some really interesting stuff that happens early on, and I just remember it being a fantastic game. It's one I think about a lot, actually. It's one of my favorite memories with the DS. That's the power of believing. There is nothing you can't do if your will is strong enough. If you believe something's impossible, it will be impossible. But once you believe there's a way, the world will offer up its powers to you. On to day 11, we have... Lux Pain. This is a visual novel I picked up a few years ago, but haven't had a chance to play yet, so let's see how it goes. Off the bat, I can say that I really like the graphics and the art style, but I am seeing some problems start to pop up. Now, it has pretty mixed to bad reviews, and it seems a lot of the complaints are about the translation and the pacing. 30 minutes in, I can see some of those issues already. The story is a little difficult to follow, and there's voice acting, but a lot of the time what's being said doesn't match the written text, even if the sentiment is the same. It almost feels like two different translations of the same source text, so it feels pretty strange when you try to follow along. I am still curious about the game though, so I think I'll go back to it at some point and see how much all that stuff really impacts the storytelling. Today's game is... Fantasy Star Zero. I'm so excited for this one. This is another backlog game, but one that's pretty high up there because I'm a big fan of Fantasy Star Online, and I've heard that this game uses a very similar combat system. It's a sci-fi action RPG where you can choose to play as one of three different races, which apparently all have different storylines. I decided to start with the android race so I could recreate my Fantasy Star Online character. So far, I am really loving the gameplay. I have to say, it really does feel like a portable Fantasy Star Online, which is so fun. One of the reasons I wanted this game was because I thought the multiplayer looked really fun, and I have yet to try it out, but I think it's going to be a blast. I expect I'll be playing this again very, very soon. The next game we have is... Nintendogs. So, it felt wrong to do a DS video without talking about Nintendogs. This is a game most are probably familiar with. It's apparently the second best-selling game on the DS. Now, I actually left my copy back home, so I went ahead and grabbed a new one for this video. I had Lab and Friends as a kid, so I thought this time I'd get one of the other versions. I actually ended up getting two. I got Chihuahua and Friends and Dalmatian and Friends. This has been a really fun one to revisit. I remember at the time I thought it was incredible that you could use voice commands to ask your dogs to do tricks and things. Honestly, I still think it's pretty impressive, even if it doesn't always work perfectly. I'm really glad I had an excuse to play this game again. A lot of good memories have been flooding back to me today. For day 14, we have... Chrono Trigger! This is gonna be fun. I have a lot of love for this game. If you're not familiar with it, it's a turn-based RPG that first came out on the Super Nintendo, and it's just fantastic. A really classic game for the genre. It's got a really interesting story that requires you to time travel to a bunch of different eras, a really fun battle system, incredible music, everything is just top-notch. To be honest, I spent most of my time today at the carnival, but I had a lot of fun. Day number 15 is... Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. I guess I haven't mentioned this here before, but I am a massive Ace Attorney fan. It can be a little silly sometimes, but it has a lot of excellent storylines and a cast of characters that are so dear to me. So Trials and Tribulations is actually the third game. I decided to put this one in here because the last case is set in a very snowy mountain village, which I thought would be fitting for Christmas and also because it's my favourite case in the series. There are so many callbacks and exciting moments in the trial. I can't tell you how much of a thrill it was when I first played it and when I learned the truth of the case, and I shouldn't say too much about it, I guess, but 
yeah, it's one of my favorite stories. I was really tearing up playing this game again today. It means an awful lot to me. For day number 16, we have... Trace Memory. This is a classic puzzle adventure game on the DS. It's about a girl who goes to this mysterious island in search of her father, who had been presumed dead for 11 years. While on the island, she befriends a ghost named Dee, who has some mysteries of his own to figure out. The pair work together to solve puzzles and uncover the truth behind each of their pasts. It's a very solid game that utilizes the features of the DS in some really creative ways, which is something I really appreciate. For day 17, we have... Kirby Squeak Squad. A bit of a different title for this video, but one that I really wanted to include because it's one of those very nostalgic childhood games for me. I got this as a birthday present from my brother, and I've had a lot of fun with it over the years. I haven't played a ton of Kirby games because I don't usually gravitate towards platformers, but I really enjoyed this one. I love the concept of the bubbles on the touchscreen and how you can combine them to create new abilities. I remember it also had single card download mini games, which is something I really miss. I thought being able to play multiplayer games with one cart was the coolest thing back then. My siblings and I used to use it a lot. So yeah, a very fun game for today. And a lot of nice memories. Okay, today is... 999. So I'm just going to tell you straight up that this is one of my top two games of all time, and naturally it's incredibly special to me. I might have mentioned this on my channel before. Um, one day I'd like to talk more about why I love it so much and the impact it's had on my life, but for now I'll just give you a quick overview of the game. So 999 is a visual novel with escape room puzzle segments. The premise of the story is that nine people have been kidnapped and placed onto a ship that is going to sink in nine hours. There are nine numbered doors scattered throughout the ship, and behind each of them is a puzzle room. To escape the ship, they need to find the door marked with a nine. The ending you get will depend on the doors you choose to go through and some of the dialogue choices along the way. There is a true end, which you kind of have to stick around for to get the full narrative experience, but it's so worth it, and honestly there's so much you can learn even in the bad endings, so none of it is time wasted really. There's only so much I can say about it because I think it's best to go in blind, but I think it's a fantastic story and another game that is perfect for the DS. It has been remastered and bundled with the sequel under the Nonary games, but if you have a DS, I would still recommend this version. I think the remaster does lose something, and doesn't completely recreate the experience you get on the DS. This was a game that was developed specifically for the console, and that is really apparent as you play it through to the end. But I'm still glad they made the remaster, and that more people can experience the game now, because I think it's a really special one. On to day 19, we have... Rune Factory! Lots of love for this title. I only played it for the first time a few years ago, but I thought it held up really well. This series is still going strong today, but if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a spin-off of Harvest Moon. It's basically a cross between a farming sim and a fantasy RPG, and I think it does both of those things really well. There's a lot of freedom in the activities you can do, and a lot of skills to level up, like cooking, pharmacy, and mining. I remember when I first played this, I spent so much time in the mines, and I got my level up so high that I was finding a ton of precious ore every time I'd go out. It was a lot of fun, and honestly a lot more efficient than making a living through farming. <laughs> I had a lot of fun playing Rune Factory again today. It really makes me want to go and find Rune Factory 2 and 3, which are also on the DS, because I think it's just the perfect console for games like this. Today's game is... 
Jake Hunter, Memories of the Past. I haven't played this one yet, but I'm a big fan of the Jake Hunter game on the 3DS, so I've been really excited for this. I love mystery visual novels, and this one has decent reviews, so I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So from what I've played today, it seems pretty promising. I feel like it's been a while since I've played a detective game, so I really enjoyed myself this afternoon. I think I'll try to dive further into it over Christmas, so I'll keep you posted. For day 21, we have... Pokemon Conquest. This has been a very anticipated game for me. So this is actually another backlog game, one that I've been wanting to play for years. In a nutshell, it's a Pokemon tactics game, which I think is such a strange but fantastic idea. So far, it's been a lot of fun. It's actually a crossover with the Nobunaga's Ambition series, so it has this really nice feudal Japan theme. I like when Pokemon branches out with these more creative spin-offs, so hopefully the rest of it holds up well. For number 22 we have... Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. So this is the sequel to Hotel Dusk, which is a staple adventure game for the DS. I thought this one would be more interesting to showcase for the video because it's a little bit lesser known. I believe the localization was a PAL exclusive, weirdly enough, so a bit harder to come by than Hotel Dusk. Both of the games are noir mystery visual novels with investigation and puzzle elements. They're actually by the same developer as Trace Memory. You play as a detective named Kyle Hyde, who spends the first game investigating the disappearance of his partner. As you can see, it's one of those games that require you to hold the DS sideways, so it's like you're reading a book while playing. This is my first time playing the sequel, and it feels and looks so similar to the first game. I can't wait to dive further into it. So the second to last game for this video is... The World Ends With You. This is a widely beloved title on the DS, for good reason. It's about a very antisocial teenager named Neku, who dies and gets sucked into the Reapers game, which is a week-long competition run by a person that goes by the Composer. The contestants are forced to pair up and are given different tasks to complete each day. Whoever wins will have the opportunity to be brought back to life. It's got a really unique atmosphere to it. It's set in Shibuya, so it's very stylish in a pop city kind of way. It also has an incredible soundtrack. If you want to get a feel for it, I recommend looking up the song called Calling. It's my favorite. I think one of the reasons this game was such a hit on the DS is because it has such an incredibly unique battle system. You have Neku fighting enemies on the touch screen and then his partner fighting on the top screen. And you control them both at the same time. Neku with the stylus and his partner with the d-pad. It sounds very hectic, and it is, but somehow it works. There are lots of creative moves you can learn that require you to do different motions with the stylus, and some that even use voice controls. This game is available on Switch now, but as you can imagine, it's a very different experience. It's another game that was designed for the DS, and they had to cut quite a bit gameplay-wise to get it to work on the single screen. But that said, a lot of people did enjoy it there just fine. Anyway, it was lots of fun revisiting this game. But let's move on to the final one. Now, before I open this one, I do have to confess that while I did shuffle the rest of the games, this last one wasn't randomized. But I felt like in order to bring this whole thing full circle, I just had to save this game for the final day. So that game is... Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, a Pokemon spin-off that defied all my expectations and became one of my favourite video games ever. It's difficult for me not to get emotional when I'm talking about this game because it really means a lot to me and brings back so many memories. This was my very first Nintendo DS game. I played it for the first time on Christmas morning when I was 11 years old, and it's a morning that I'll always remember. I have such a vivid memory of sitting under the Christmas tree and doing the personality quiz at the beginning of the game. 
I was a Trico and I chose Piplup as my partner. I asked for this game not knowing much about it to be honest. I loved Pokemon but I really had no idea what I was getting into with this spin-off. Funnily enough, I've come to largely prefer Mystery Dungeon to Mainline Pokemon. Mainly because this game had a story that moved me like no other Pokemon game ever has. It really caught me off guard. It's about time travel, friendship, saving the world, and it's just so well written. These characters breathe so much life into the game and there are twists and turns that blew my mind as a kid. With the quiz at the beginning, and the fact that the main character isn't actually a Pokemon, but a human that gets turned into a Pokemon, I think the game was really designed to put the player in the shoes of the character, and I really got pulled into it. I felt such a strong connection to my partner too, because I saw a lot of myself in her. At the start of the game, she's a nervous wreck, and has a lot of dreams and good intentions, but struggles to take the steps to actually go out and seize them. The game teaches you that friendship is an extremely valuable thing, and that was always really touching to me. So that was my Nintendo DS advent calendar. This was such a fun project to do. The DS really is a comfort console to me, and I had such a lovely time revisiting it. Honestly, I think it still holds up really well today, and I'm glad that I still have new games to play on it, and probably a lot more to discover too. But that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, this one was quite the labour of love, but I had so much fun. I hope you have a lovely day, a lovely holiday season, and I will see you next time.